from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Give me a darn break. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It could be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. It's that simple. Just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Our MySpace page, which has been up now for a little over a week, myspace.com slash Tom Likas. That's myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. We also link to it through our regular website, blowmeuptom.com. Let's go to Adam on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey. Hey, Tom. Hey. Yeah. Hey, you know, I just got to say that, you know, all these things that you're saying, uh, where did you learn from? Because, you know, I think that, you know, what you're saying is, you know, bad. Should what saying, is? Yeah, what is bad? Saying that type of stuff. Be you know, specific. Be, wait, be specific. Well, you know, like I just heard you talk to a girl, you demoted her, you said, you know, you called her an idiot. She is an idiot. Well, what makes an idiot? What do you mean, what makes an idiot? I mean, someone who, because someone who doesn't... Everyone makes mistakes? So, it, yeah, it, but not just making mistakes, but continuing to make, continuing to make mistakes. I mean, like, you know, people... Not learning mistakes. from your mistakes. Yeah, true, but, you know, there's other things where, like, you know, you're saying how much money you make and right. all that type of stuff. I mean, yes. you know, I don't see how... You know, there's other people that have been more successful than you, and I don't see how where you learned it from. Where I learned what from? All your stuff, your mighty wisdom. What makes you so high-end that you should be telling other people what to say, what to do? Uh, well, first of all, I'm sitting down here at the radio station, and you're calling in from your mommy and daddy's house. Let's start oh, with yes. That. Right. Yeah, so, you know, I could grow up to be uh, president of the United States of America. Somehow I doubt you're going to do that. And how do you know that? Because I can tell by the lack of articulation uh, on your part. Uh, believe me, uh, just because you're 16 doesn't mean you can't already be somewhat articulate and intelligent, and I'm not hearing evidence of it here. Well, you know, you know, as time progresses, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, well, yes, actually, I have a pretty good idea, and I have a pretty good track record of predicting things that are going to happen. Well, how do you know that? How do you predict things? How, because I have a lot of experience. Are you a mind reader? Or are you a I don't. Prophet? I didn't say I'm a mind reader, and I didn't say I'm a prophet. It's based on experience. It's based After you've experienced the same set of circumstances hundreds of times, eventually it's pretty easy to predict an outcome. So what you're saying is that you've gone through a hundred experiences of everything that people have told you before that you know exactly. Pretty much. Pretty, pretty, pretty right much. Person. Pretty much. And I'll tell you, ten thousand times more experience than you have. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you know, there's all different types of experience there, Tom, you know. Yeah, well, you know, sucking, I, I, I guarantee you, you probably have more experience sucking your thumb well, than I do. I, I'm sure that's true. And hiding behind your mommy's skirt, I know you've got more experience at that. I, I'm sure you've got a lot more experience at some things than I do. Really, really? And how would yeah. you know that? Drinking out of a sippy cup. <laughs> a sippy cup? Really? So that's what you're doing right now? What? You're, you're drinking out of a sippy cup. Is there no, no, I'm talking to a moron. You're talking to a moron? Yes. All right, I'm going to ask you a. I'm going to ask you the bonus question right now. Are you ready? Yeah, go right ahead. All right. How do you keep a moron in suspense? How do you keep a moron in suspense? Uh, I don't know. Talking to Tom Likas. How do you, Tom? He just hung up. I bet you. <laughs> No, you said, how do you keep a moron on suspense?
He never answered the question. <laughs> I think I answered it for him. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, experience tells, Sonny. Thank you, Tammy, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I have a question for you. Sure. I just moved to the Los Angeles area. I'm in Covina right now. So and I'm looking on Yahoo Personals, you know, trying to meet guys, trying to get to know the area. So you see these profiles um, of these guys, and they say exactly what they, I'm looking for, somebody who's stable, somebody who's carefree, somebody who likes to go out, blah, 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 blah. And they, also, they always say how open-minded they are and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you see that they have, like, their ideal age type, and then they, you could get to race, and they go, like, Caucasian, or they may go to Asian. So if you're not Caucasian or if you're not Asian or if you're not of the um, ethnicity that they're looking for, should you even bother to reply, even though you may fit everything that they're looking for? It depends, dear. Uh, are you looking to get married or have fun? Have fun. Uh, men will have sex with anyone. Are you sure about that? Yes. What what they won't do necessarily is marry anyone. Okay. So if what you want is a good time, uh, these guys will respond to you. Even though you're not the race that they have put down? Darling, that's the race they will marry. Oh, Okay. So if you're just looking for a good time, go ahead and respond. Call me back and let me know what happens. I guarantee you these men will respond. But what I am also telling you, and you need to be prepared for this, they will not take you home to meet their family, you will not meet their friends, and they will never, ever marry you. Mm. So if a guy is like that, you shouldn't even bother with them then. It depends. If You just said you want to have fun. Yeah, but I want to be respected too. Darling, again, when I say have fun, here's what I mean by have fun. Have sex. Okay. Are you online to, to find a guy to, that you can have sex with? I'm online to find a guy that I can have fun with. And fun means going out and also meet. It may mean having sex, but it also means, you know, just being open and hanging out with somebody. All right, but here's the thing. If sex is not part of the package, guys aren't interested. Okay, sex is part of the package. Okay, but then, all right, so you're going out, you're having fun, and you're having sex. Mm-hmm. A guy who says he only wants to be with a cock, what, what are you? Black. You're black. A guy who says he only wants to be with a Caucasian, that means he will only have a serious relationship with a Caucasian. Okay. All right, Tom, I guess that was a pretty much honest answer. It is an honest answer. All right. By the way, I by the way, I don't date Caucasians. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, if if somebody really beautiful and Caucasian wanted to have sex with me, I might do it, but I wouldn't uh, have a relationship with them. But would you think any less of her? Would you treat her any different? I mean, would you still go well, out with her, like in uh, public, and treat her with kindness? As well, yes, but she would not meet my family or friends. All right. All because it, it, it wouldn't matter that she would be a great person. I, be because, funny be, and smart. Be, 
because in the long run, um, I want to be with somebody who meets my qualifications. Yeah, but once you get to know somebody, see, that's what I don't understand. Once you so you're telling somebody, me you're attracted to everybody of every race, every ethnicity, everybody. I, so if you met, I'm asking you, if you met a guy from Pakistan, you could have, you could get married to him and be with him forever. If he was a really nice guy and we had a good time, and if he didn't have that attitude that a lot of um, Middle Eastern people have, yeah, sure, I could. And my family wouldn't think anything of it. Um, what about uh, other races? Any race. It wouldn't matter what race it was. As long as a person is nice and respectful, and if I have a good time with them, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but having a good time with someone doesn't mean you can be married to them. Yeah, but you can marry somebody of your own race and still be pretty miserable. I mean, race shouldn't... Race shouldn't even be a part of it. It's about how well you get along with the person. So you and don't find you don't find people of certain ethnicities or races more attractive than others? Uh, no. I mean, just, let me give you an example. Ma okay. Many women of all colors, all colors, they say, "Oh, he's really hot. He's Italian." Hmm. But that that would mean it's 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 how he would treat you. I mean, but you, yeah, but you do like, know, but you do know that. But here's the thing: if you're just having fun, you might have sex with an Italian and then say this guy's a jerk and never never go out with him again. Right. Okay. But it, so he, he wasn't nice to you, but you had a great evening. You had a memorable experience. Have you ever had sex with somebody and then later on said, "I think this guy's a jerk"? Yeah, I have. Right. So that could happen. Okay. Still, it wouldn't matter what race he is. I mean, that could happen with any person. Yeah, but here's the thing. I, when I use Italians as an example, I hear this from women all the time. They love guys who are Italian. We did a show about it. We asked women, why do you say that? So there are women who would date an Italian and wouldn't marry one. Let me give you another example. Persians. We've talked about this on the air before. In L.A., you meet a lot of Persians. You met Persian guys? Um, you know what? I have a lot of experience with Persian guy and where I work at, and I don't like their personalities generally. <laughs> well, darling, you you now the list is getting smaller. <laughs> Let me tell you something about most Persian guys, okay, that okay. I've met, and when I've talked about this on the air, they've agreed with me. Persian guys will date you, but they will never ever marry you, ever. Yeah, because they have to marry Persian women. They have to stay within their own culture. That's uh, well, so. You will never. You will in most cases. You won't meet their families. In many cases, you won't meet their friends. They'll be nice to you, but uh, one day will come when they were going to say they're going to dump you, and they know it before they start. Okay. I don't. I mean, I don't know what to say to that. I just think. I mean, they could be missing out. Well, they could be missing out, but there are certain groups who believe very strongly that you marry your own kind. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I'll bet Tammy, if, if you're if you're black, and you showed up in certain crowds or in certain neighborhoods with people who are not black, people would start saying things to you. I've seen it happen because I've been the guy who's been with a black woman. So what you're saying is it's just better to hang out with people who just want to be around you? I say life is just a series of experiences. And you shouldn't worry so much about whether something's going to last forever. You should worry about having as many great experiences in life as you can. Okay. You're right. And sometimes they don't end up as anything more than nice memories. Do you know I do you know I've had relationships where I look back on them? Mm -hmm. The way people look at a TV show, like a sitcom. Uh -huh. Remember when Seinfeld ended and they had the big last episode and everybody was, you know, all upset it was ending and they made a big deal about it? I I remember. Remember that? Yeah. Or ch other shows like Cheers or other shows like that. Okay. Friends, all of those, yeah. I look at relationships like people look at TV shows. I say, that was a pretty good run. 
That was a pretty good show. I, I laughed a lot. And then I move on and watch another show. Yeah, but Tom, people are not TV shows. I mean, darling, people have feelings that you can meet some really great, intelligent women. But darling, you have just because you date somebody is not an implied guarantee that they're going to stay with you forever. They're more like TV shows than you think. People are entertainment for us. For us. It's kind of cold. It's just honest. I mean, I mean, I could say that you're saying that people could be easily replaced, and that's not true. It's not easy finding somebody that you really? connect with. Really? So are, are, you, are, you, are, are you married? No. Ever been married? No. Why not? I, I have no idea. It just never happened never happened. Ever live with ever, anyone? Uh, have I ever been what? Have you ever lived with anyone? Yes. Hated it. H hated it. Hated it. Yeah. Well, you see, maybe you wouldn't have hated it so much if you just had fun with the guy and didn't make him move in with you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll bet now you have this negative memory of that experience. What if the two of you had never moved in together? I guess everything would have stayed fresh. Right. And every, and every time we would have seen each other, we would have always been in, good, um, in a good mood because we're happy to see each other and we're not with each other all the time. Not only that, six months later, two years later, five years later, you would think back going, boy, that guy was great. That was fun. We had a good time. Wouldn't you rather feel that way about somebody? Then to move in with each other and, and want to practically claw each other's eyes out? <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, that's my point. <laughs> okay. So what I'm saying is have every great experience you can have in life and take it from somebody who's older than you. So many of us are so concerned about what's going to happen the next 20 steps. That we fail to enjoy what we're in now. We fail to, to be in the moment. I can't tell you how many great women, back when I used to have relationships, I can't tell you how many great women brutalized me and beat me up to the point where I hated them. Wow. We, but, but I loved them. I loved hanging out with them. We had fun. But they were so concerned about asking questions like, where is this relationship going? Do you plan to ask me to marry you? What about children? What's going to happen? They, they failed to see what a great time we were having. And they ruined it. Because they worry too much. You know, maybe you will marry somebody someday, and maybe you won't. But would you pass up dating somebody because you're not sure what his intentions are? Oh, definitely not. Well, guess what? When you uh, look at those uh, profiles online and somebody says they'll only date a Caucasian, that might be somebody who'd be fun to hang out with. What if you met somebody in there who liked doing things you like doing? Or better, what if you met somebody in there who does things that you'd like to do but you can't afford to do? What if you met a guy in there who wants to travel to the countries you want to go to? Or who has good tickets to concerts of artists you like to see? Or somebody who, you know, likes barbecuing in the backyard or somebody who likes uh, uh, taking long drives or whatever it is you like. What if you saw somebody like that and you said, but you know what? Eh, you know, if it keeps going for a year or two or three, I'm going to want to know what his intentions are. And uh, he probably wouldn't marry me. So I'll skip him. Hmm. All right. I'm just going to go out and have a good time and I will let you know what happened. That's what you do, Tammy. All right. And you will have a good time. Okay. And and if you just let yourself go and feel the moment, somewhere along the line of what you want is to get married or live with someone or have a boyfriend, it'll happen somewhere along the line. But don't ruin all the experiences you're having by being so focused on needing to have a boyfriend or needing to be married or needing to have children. I think it's it's the single most reason people ruin the best parts of their lives. All right. Okay, Tom, well, I think you're great. And can you take me out number nine style? I certainly can. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me.
From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine, number nine, number nine, ten, ten, ten. Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I was just like that one guy that was waiting around for that one girl forever. And then it occurred to me why. There's tons and tons of girls out there. If one doesn't give it up to you, many more will. You know, you just got to find them and make it happen. Right? Why waste the time on one girl? It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on this Friday at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. It's Cameron on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, it is a pleasure and a privilege, my friend. I'm certain of that. Yeah, dude, I'm so excited to speak with you. When Dean told me I was going to be on the air, dude, I immediately shut off my radio, rolled up the windows, turned off the air. Um, I'm sweating profusely, Tom. I love that. <laughs> I'm sweating like a whore in church here. Uh, but uh, I've been on the line for about an hour and a half, and, dude, some of these callers have been so annoying, my friend, um, in my ear. Um, I have some advice for, I believe it was Vicky, Taylor, and Adam. Um, just go get some rope and hang yourself from the tallest <laughs> thing you can find. Um, other than that, oh, yeah, I mean, Lou Dobbs Jr. guys that keep calling, stick with yes. them, stick, stick with the Ku Klux Klan. You're going to do big things. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> um, but besides, besides the point, I'm a little ornery, dude. Um, I'm on the 91 here. But, uh, dude, it sounds so cliche, but you and cheesy, but, dude, you saved my life, my friend. Um, I was actually engaged to be wed last month. I started listening to you about two months ago, no joke. Um, I'm, one of my buddies told me to listen to you. He didn't tell me about your beliefs or your views or, or anything that you uh, stress on, but he said, you know, you're a funny guy. It's a funny show. You should listen to it. It'll help get you through the freeway. So I did. At first, I didn't like you know, at first I didn't like you, um, as so many callers have said that I've heard so far anyway, uh, but I gave you a chance, and, dude, um, you made me look at my life from the outside perspective here. Um, I just got out of school, got a bachelor in uh, mechanical engineering. Um, I'm not doing great right now, but, you know, it's looking better every day. Um, and I, you know, I looked at it and I said, I come from a Catholic background, uh, upbringing, really strong Catholics. Um, so, you know, I've been born and bred to be, you know, married, have kids, you know, yada, 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 the picket fence, the whole thing. Um, and that's what everyone else has been telling me, not not truly what I wanted. Um, and I realize you don't tell people not to get married. You tell people to do what makes you be happy, you know, to, just to be happy. Um, and so, I, you know, I called it off. And basically, you know, basically my family, um, everyone I, you know, that's close to me, not disown me, but they're just disappointed. And I don't understand why, because it's what I want, you know. Uh, I like to travel. I, I well, like to... wait, you answered your own question. You don't even know it. Uh, it. It's because they don't want you to do what you want. They want you to do what they want. Yeah, but I see that's the, and I, I've come to realize if, you know, my parents you can't see that, then, then screw them. I don't care if I spend Christmas alone every goddamn year uh, from here to kingdom come, as long as, you know, I'm doing what I want to do. I'm, I'm happy, you know? Um, I mean, I started house shopping with this chick. We started getting really into it. And, uh, I just realized, you know, that's not what I want to do. And so when I did break it off, I told her, you know, I like you. You're a good girl. I would like to have you in my life, but I think we need to keep our situation the same we need to have our separate apartments you know and we can still hang out we still be cool and she didn't want that and of course. because you know it's because she didn't really love me she was looking for a meal ticket and i and i come to came to find that out dude because of you and i really appreciate it tom um it's something that uh i know a lot of the callers don't understand you you really don't care about about pe these people calling in but i mean that you care about the points and, and the things you stress on the air and you got to me dude and a lot of people take it for granted take it in one ear and out the other but i listened and uh it's something that that's changed my life my friend i have a whole new outlook on on everything and so i just wanted to call and tell you that uh i'm listening now and i'm going to be listening till you're off the air and thank you so much dude and the most important question What's Are you getting more ass than a toilet seat? 
<laughs> you know it, dude. And that's one thing that, that I love. You know, I love different girls. I love sex. I love, I love just being out there, dude. If I, I don't need somebody there at my, at my house when I get home to tell me they love me. You know, if I want someone to feel, you know, loved or or accepted, I'll go like pull a cheers, go where everybody knows my name. I'll go to the ball, I'll go to my friend's house. I'll do my own thing, you know, and that's fine. I don't need to come home and have it from somebody else. Not to mention, I don't need the questioning. I, if I want to come home late, I don't want to check in. You know, I'm a big boy. I'll do my own thing, and, and I'm 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 proud of that. And uh, you know, I got to admit, you know, I was pretty much primarily raised by my mother. My dad was away a lot, and so I'm pretty much a 23 year old kid, dude. I'm I'm. Really, I am. I'm a baby, and I I have a lot of growing up to do, and I realize that, and I'm not going to throw it all away by getting married, having kids, and ruining my life. And, and the lot... reason the reason you were engaged and out there looking for a house at 22 or 23 is because your mom raised you that way. Respect yeah, well, women. Your dad's a jerk, and yep. uh, you you bought the whole program. I uh, sure did, Tom, and I really believe that for the longest time. And not to knock my mother, she's a great woman. She works hard, you know, she does her thing, but sure. you know, I think she's got it twisted. Um, it's, well, it's I, as that. I always say, by the way, she did tell you he's a jerk and an a-hole and stuff, Oh, right? yeah, of course. Right, but here's the deal. Here's the thing that guys like you always forget to ask. Isn't it true? Isn't it true that your mom spread her legs and said, Come on, you jerk, you a-hole. I want to have a baby with you. Exactly. So the bottom line here is, no matter what your mother said, she didn't do what she said that you should do. And that's she something can't that say that. But, no, but here's the deal. You need to become the jerk your father is. Indeed. Because that's what women like your mom react to. And, yeah, and as far as that story you were talking about earlier about how the guy changed around his whole profile and stuff, I totally believe that because, you know, women are, are just uh, come to find our snakes. They'll tell you one thing one night, and the next night it's, it's an entirely different thing or they're thinking an entirely different thing. Right. Um, th there's always an agenda with people. You know, I deal with it all day long. It's, everyone has an agenda. Everyone has a plan. Um, nobody's real anymore. And so I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to be happy by myself and, and have fun, dude. I love it. Cameron, I'm proud of you. I, I couldn't be more proud of you, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the call. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If I'm blessed enough to meet my soulmate... Why would I go and blow it with marriage? It's the Tom Likas Show. It's Stan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello? Huh? Yes, Stan. <laughs> How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Good. Hey, I was hoping if you would clear something up for me. Sure. Uh, it was, I think, two and a half years ago was the very first show I ever heard of yours, and you were very anti-MySpace. That was actually the whole topic. I don't know if you remember that. Um, I do, and uh, let me let me clarify uh, what I said and what I continue to believe. Okay. Your girlfriend should not have MySpace. Right. If you have MySpace, it's because you're trying to hook up. And on top of that, there were 35 fakes. And back then, MySpace uh, had no enforcement of any kind. They said, in fact... Uh, I wrote to MySpace, and somebody had uh, snagged uh, my name, Tom Likas, as their address on MySpace, <laughs> and then and pretended to be me. Put my right. photo, which they took my copyrighted material off my website, posted my photo, guessed at my age, threw a few quotes from the radio show in there, right. and then proceeded to try to hook up with chicks. When I called MySpace... Uh, and I sent them an email, and I documented what I had to say. I got a form letter back telling me that it was within the standards of conduct of MySpace and that there was nothing they were going to do about it. At one point, there were as many as 35 fakes. And so it made no sense to have a MySpace page because I'd be competing with myself. How would people know which one was me? <laughs> And now you have your own official page. I uh, well, the the loser who had stolen my name. Uh, we finally got him kicked off, along with thirty five other fakes, all in one big dragnet. 
And so now all of the other uh, addresses that uh, pretended to be me, we now own all of them. And all every right. one of them directs you to my MySpace page. So when you're on MySpace, you now have a pretty good idea that you're connecting with our show and not with some fake. But but when MySpace said, hey, that's perfectly okay, anybody can pretend to be anybody they want, I didn't have any use for MySpace. Right. Well, I was just curious, like, what swayed you to create your own page since you seemed so against it? Right. Well, I was against it because anybody could go on MySpace and say that their name is Tom Likas. And and then I'm on there, and I'm saying I'm Tom Likas, but I can't say my address is myspace.com slash Tom Likas because some other guy claimed it. Right. By the way, my name is service marked, which is like uh, the equivalent of a trademark. It's registered with the patent office. That didn't sway MySpace. So uh, it, it sounded to me like, uh, but why, why would I want to have a page on MySpace and compete with 35 fakes? Sure. But if I don't have to compete with fakes, and if people are on MySpace and they know they're chatting with our show, I'm good with it. All right. That sounds good to me. Um, there we go. Cool. Before I go, Tom, I just want, as a side note, wanted to let you know that I finally decided it's time to break up with my girlfriend. And, Very nice. Uh, yeah. And... <laughs> Yeah, it took a lot of thinking, but just this whole, actually all day today, a lot of the stuff you've been saying to other listeners is really resonating with me. It makes me really feel good about the decision that I'm, I'm doing the right thing. You know, I finally woke up and realized that my 20s, you know, I'm too young. My 20s should be for me, and I, I don't, I'm too young to be tied down. How did she react when you dumped her? Uh, you know what? I, I haven't done it yet. I'm doing it this weekend. All right. Right. Do you have a Do you have a game plan? How are you going to do it? Um, well, she's out of town, so I, usually I I tend to do these things face to face, but that's just not an option. I'm just going to call her. Does she live with you? No, that's actually one of the reasons why I want to split is that she's been pressuring me to move in. Oh boy. Yeah. You don't need that. No, don't. Stan, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm proud of myself for finally realizing that uh, this isn't where uh, I need to be right now. I just, I need to move on. <laughs> you are absolutely right. Thank you so much for the call. I appreciate it, Stan. This is Britt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for the answer. I just got a little quick question. Um, who's your favorite all-time stand-up comedian? Well, if you had to look at somebody's career as like, uh, you know, the, the body of work they've done yeah, and the length of time they've done it, the, the best of all time, in my view, of stand-up comedians now, and I'm not talking about like radio or movie comedians like Jack Benny, who I also yeah, thought was know, brilliant. Yeah, stand-up comedian. Uh, George Carlin. Over... George Carlin, really? Have you seen yeah. his new stand-up on HBO? I did, and I thought it was excellent. I, I did too, but I got a, I got a, it got a little rough review, didn't don't you think? Have you heard? Well, that? It, well, yeah, but uh, who cares about the reviews? I mean, yeah, you know that, that's what I'm saying too. Yeah, yeah, I liked it too. Uh, you, you know, in fact, I got to tell you something. We've interviewed George Carlin, and uh, thank you. And, and that you're well, you're welcome. I don't know if you heard it, but no, uh, I, I did well, actually. Yeah, I loved it. When we had him on the show, uh, he told us something very interesting. He said that he uh, he thought his work was getting a little. Stale. Right. And then he saw Chris Rock. Yeah. And he realized he had to up his game. So here's a guy who's like, at the time, was like mid-60s, 62, 63 years old. Who, Garland? Yeah. At the time, we had the conversation. Right, right. About six years ago. Seven right. years ago. Yeah, he's like 70 almost. Yes. And so what he did was he completely, he didn't reinvent himself, but my God, he completely stepped it up several notches. I thought it was great. No, no I, I completely thought it was great. Yeah. Now, I, I will say that I, I, I love George Carlin to death. I like him personally when I spend time with him. And, I, you know, I've watched him my whole life as a comedian on television and in concert, and I, I've loved him. Uh, but if you ask me today who my favorite comedian is yeah, today yeah. At, at the moment, it, it, it is Chris Rock. Chris Rock, really? Yes, I'll be going to see Chris Rock at uh, he's playing at the Gibson Amphitheater in L.A., uh, in a couple of weeks. Oh, that's cool. Hey, I got one more question. Yeah. 
Um, what do you think about Artie leaving the show on Thursday on Howard Stern Show? Have you heard that yet? No, no, I didn't hear it. Uh, I don't listen it? to Howard every day. Yeah, he got, he got in a big fight, and I guess, you know, he's resigning from the Stern Show, so-called. And they're off, they're off next week, so they'll be back in a week. But uh, I don't know. Well, I think it's all grist for the mill, and, and no one is better than Howard Stern at taking real stuff happening in his life. That's right, yeah. And turning it into great radio. Um, hey. hey, you're off, awesome, man. I mean, I miss having Howard Stern on this radio station and the other stations that we shared. I, I really do. Yeah, I talked to you uh, last Friday. Um, hey, what is your most expensive uh, uh, glass of wine, or I mean uh, bottle of wine you've, you've purchased? The the most expensive one I purchased yes, was twenty three hundred dollars. Wow, that's good. That's good. How how did it taste? It was fantastic, was and it? I drank it right away. Yes, it, it was. Than sex? No, nothing no. is better than sex. Nothing's better than sex. All right. No. I love you, Tom. Britt, thank you. And you sound like a crank call waiting to happen. So I think I got out at exactly the right time. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Garrett. On the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Garrett. Hey, Tom. What's going on? Still a little radio show here. Um, I need some advice. Yeah? I uh, I pulled the stupid of all time about two years ago. I moved a girl out here from Minnesota, which is where I'm from originally. I now live in Phoenix area. Um, bought her a house, bought her the car, you know. I was going to get married, that whole thing. Um, I've only been listening to you for about six months, although I have listened to all your podcasts, so I got caught up really quick on what life is supposed to be about. She's gone. Um, got rid of her after I found out she was a hundred grand in debt and sinking me and watching my bank account diminish. I'm wondering what I should do. I'm in a house now. I've got the truck back from her along with my car. My car's paid off. Hers isn't. But I am now living for my house and that other car where everything I'm making is going towards, you know, 2200 a month for a mortgage, association fee, electric, cable, blah, 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 blah. Um, and, of course, even though I put 10% down on the house, I'm now about 40% down on the house um, and wondering what I should do. Well, uh, boy, you're in the same problem a lot of people are. I think you need to try to get a better loan, uh, for one thing. I, I definitely think you do. I don't know what kind of mortgage you have. What kind um, of mortgage do you have? It's a 30-year fixed. I've got a 5.9%, so, I mean, it's not going to get much better. Well, well you're um, right about that. I mean, the, the loan is all you... right, but I just, I, what I'm calling about really is I want my lifestyle back. I want to be able to go on vacations and have fun and go well, into this instead of just working. You... Unfortunately, I have to tell you, you are pretty much a prisoner of the real estate market, which is going to stink for a while. Okay. So all you can do is trim your sales, waste as little money as possible, save as much as you can, keep whacking away at the mortgage, keep your costs of operating the house to the lowest that you possibly can. That means turn the lights off. That means turn the water off when you turn the hot water off when you're not using it. Do anything you can to cut the cost of operation. Okay. And you have to hang in there. Otherwise, you could declare bankruptcy and give the house back to the bank. But you know what that's going to do to your credit. Yeah, I know. And I've got about a 730 credit score right now. And that was actually one of my questions is should I just like basically. I would pay it. And, and make that plan with lowered expenses. The Tom Likas Show.